now we're going to start looking at the volume of cylinders. Now, the volume of cylinders is a, it's similar to all the volumes of all the other problems that we do. Uh, in the sense that when we're talking about volume, we're talking about uh, a container. We're talking about something, the space within something. And every time we talk about volume, I'm going to be throwing up this first definition, which is uh, that it refer, that volume refers to the amount of space inside a figure. In this case, we're talking about the figure of a cylinder, and that kind of looks like my, my water bottle. It has a round bottom and it's cylindrical, right? <laughs> anyway, but the fact that it can hold something inside of it, we know that we're talking about three-dimensional shape, a three-dimensional figure. Um, and that's why we know it's volume, okay? We know that we're talking about volume is what I mean. Um, okay, so the formula for volume of a cylinder, like my water bottle, is very similar to the area of a circle. Now, if you remember the area of a circle, when we're talking about area, we're talking about the flat surface of something. We're not talking about anything that can contain anything. Not a container, it's a two-dimensional shape when we're talking about area. We're talking about flat surfaces like a square, a rectangle, stuff like that, a circle, right? And the formula for the area of a circle was pi r squared, right? Pi r squared. So that gave us the two-dimensional answer, like for area. Now, when we're talking about volume, we're talking about three-dimensional dimension, three dimensional shape or three-dimensional figure. And then we add a third dimension. So if you remember the area of circle, it's just adding one step more, one more dimension to get to the third dimension. Okay? So it helps us with that. It helps us uh, remember that. And, it, and also, this formula is uh, telling us a clue as to where we're going to start when we're trying to find the area, not the area, the volume of a circle. I mean, <laughs> when we're trying to find the volume of a cylinder, the formula is telling us a clue as to what we need to do first. And really, we have to find the area of the circle first. So we find the area of the circle, and then we just multiply it by the third dimension, its height. And in fact, that's how we did uh, rectangular prisms. We found the area of one surface, and then we multiply it by its length or by its height, depending on how we oriented the um, the figure, right? So that's a key thing. We, d we do the two-dimensional thing first, and then we add, we, not add, we multiply by the third, the next dimension more. Okay. And as usual, these kinds of problems also will requi require us to use algebra. So let's get started. Our first example of how to find the volume of a cylinder. So we have an example cylinder right here. I understand it's not the prettiest one I've ever drawn in my life, but we'll deal with it. So we have a basic height of eight millimeters, okay? And then, what did I put here? Okay, now, remember, when we're talking about the formula for uh, a circle, an area of a circle, or the volume of a cylinder, th they both require radius. And we have to know the difference by now, the difference between radius and diameter. But I still gave us a couple of uh, little um, example pieces of what that means. Remember that radius is the measurement between, or the distance from the center to an outside edge of a circle? And diameter is two times that. It's, it's uh, one side of the circle to the other passing through the center. Very important that it goes through the center. But just remember that they're um, related to each other. Diameter is two radiuses, and radius is half of a diameter. Okay? All right. So in this example, I gave you radius. I gave you three. It's uh, probably a little bit hard to see, but it says uh, three millimeters, okay, as the radius. So again, we're going to use our trusted calculator, right? And remember that when I'm writing the, the, uh, the problem here, I'm going to be using 3.14 instead of this Greek letter pi. But when we use the, when we're solving it, when we're doing the operation, the multiplication and stuff, I'm going to be using the symbol pi on the calculator because it's more accurate, okay? Okay, so. So I'll start by plugging in my information that I have. I have all of this information in this example, which is nice and easy. Uh, so pi, we'll just represent it now, like I said earlier, as the 3.14. Of course, we're going to use a more accurate decimal. Um, so I'll go ahead and put this in parentheses and this in parentheses to show that everything is multiplied together, okay? Except in here, I'm going to put the radius squared. The radius in this case is 3 squared, okay? And then I have the height right here, 8. 
So everything gets multiplied, but I do have, just like in the, uh, in the area of a circle, I have an exponent. And between the multiplications and the exponent, in the order of operations, the exponent needs to get done first, okay? So please don't forget that. So I can go ahead and do that. 3 squared is 3 times 3. So I'll just write the next step down here. I haven't done anything with the pi yet. But 3 times 3 is 9 times 8, okay? And there's still more I can do before getting to that, that pi multiplication. I can multiply these two together. 9 times 8, 72, right? I think. <laughs> times pi. And so this will be my last step right here. I'm going to multiply pi times 72. And this is where I will use the calculator, okay? So here's our calculator. Can we see what we're doing here? So again, on this calculator, the pi has its own designated button. Sometimes, like I said before, you have to push second and to, to access a pi function. But on this one, like I said, it has its own button. So pi, and it puts a little Greek letter there, right? times, I'm going to multiply, times uh, 72. And I get 226.19. Um, eh, how about we just round to the whole number, 226, and say good. All right. So I'll say approximately, OK, I'm going to use my little squiggly lines here, approximately 226. OK? But I have to put my units, can't forget my units, millimeters cubed, okay? And that's the volume approximate. Again, we didn't, put, we didn't worry too much about that decimal, but that's how you would do it, okay? Um, sometimes on your answers, you'll have point something something, and then you'll see on the calculator exactly what it is. I'm just kind of being a little quick with it right now. Just trying to run through the formula, how we would work this out. So remember, a lot of this I can do mentally. I did all these little multiplications in my head. Um, and then I left the last multiplication for the calculator where I'm going to use pi. I didn't use 3.14. Actually, let's just see what happens when we do that. I'm kind of curious now. I'm just going to actually, so this one we got 226.194671, right? Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and clear that and actually just use 3.14, right? 3.14 times 72 and we get 226.08. Much smaller, much more simple looking uh, um, answer, right? But again, I've noticed that on tests, practice tests and answers in the books that we're using nowadays, um, they tend to not use, they don't use that answer. They actually get the more precise answer. So use the button pi on your calculator. All right. So I think that was pretty straightforward. I don't think that that was too crazy. Um, again, we've already talked about a lot of this in circles. So again, what I was talking about earlier, what we did first is we found the area of the bottom or the top, whatever you want to call it. I guess in this case, you could say it's the top, right? We found the area, the surface area of that top disk. And then we just multiplied shoom, by eight, all right? We just multiplied by the height. So that's all there is to it. It's not too crazy, really. Not yet, anyway, right? They do get more complicated and more interesting and more fun, I think, right? So let's change it up just a little bit, okay? Let's just change this up a little bit. We're gonna use the same, same problem, basically. Same picture. And I'll just get rid of all this and we'll start fresh. Now, what if, this time I'm gonna write it up here on top. Uh, what if I say this is eight? All right, this, uh, that dimension. And we'll say the height is, ah, we'll make it easy. We'll call it 10. And let's do these ones in inches. What the heck, right? Let me get rid of that. Okay, same question. What's the volume of this cylinder? Why don't you go ahead and stop the video and, and give me the answer, right? And try to solve it for yourself before I do it. Remember to use the pi symbol button or function on your calculator, okay? So go ahead, find the volume of this cylinder. All right. So how did it go? Was it too hard? Was it crazy? Again, notice what I always start off with. I start off with the formula. I always write down my formula first, okay? That way I know that I'm, all I have to do is plug in the things that the formula is asking for. Now we already know that the formula is not too complicated to solve. It's just a matter of one, two multiplications and one exponent where you do the exponent first and then do the two multiplications and you're done. That's it, right? Of course, some of that comes in identifying what the information is that we have. 
So this time what I did is I changed, instead of giving you the radius, which is what the uh, formula is asking for, I gave you diameter, right? I gave you from one side to the other. I gave you the distance from one side to the other. So I can't use eight. Eight's not gonna work for me because the, the formula doesn't require or doesn't ask for diameter. In fact, it asks for radius. So, what's the radius of that circle? Well, it's gonna be half the diameter, so it's, it's half of that eight, it's four. So let's go ahead and start plugging some of this information into the formula. Pi, we'll just represent it here as 3.14. We'll use a calculator, right? Uh, put my parentheses, my two sets. My radius is four, like I said, and that's gonna be four squared. And my height is 10, an easy one to multiply by. Okay, so hopefully there's no questions as to where that four came from. It's half of the diameter, that's what radius is, okay? Now, like I said earlier, we have to do the exponent first every single time, whether you're doing area of a circle or whether you're doing volume of a cylinder. But what we're gonna actually solve first, it what kinda happens when we work these problems out, like I said earlier, we end up finding the area of the circle first. You know what I mean? We find the area of this top circle part first, and then we multiply it by the height. So halfway along, we're already figuring out area of at least the two circles, All right? Okay, four squared first. Uh, four squared is 16. It's basically uh, four times four, right? Ah, there we go. So there we go. I just did that one step and rewrote what I was doing, right? Now, I can do 16 times 10 real easy. It's just 16 with a zero, because you know times 10 is just adding a zero or moving the decimal one to the right. So let's just go ahead and put pi down again, times 160. Now this number is gonna be huge, right? That's okay. Well, not huge, huge, but kind of huge, right? All right, so I'll get my calculator again. And let's clear that last one out. So again, I'm gonna use pi, and I've already explained many times why. And I'm rhyming, it's weird. All right, so I hit pi times, uh, what, 160? Okay. Let's see exactly what I'm doing. So pi times 60, or 160. And I get uh, 502.65, so 654. I'll write the, I'll write the decimal out to uh, the thousandths place this time. So we got one, or 502.654. Okay, and this, it would be inches cubed. And typically, um, they would have us round to something, right? They would may maybe make us round to the tenth, or make us round to the, the, the hundredth or the thousandth, etc. Or sometimes they ask us to round to the unit, and that's what, that would be the unit, right? Uh, the two, the ones place. But anyway, that's the basic gist, the basic gist of um, figuring out the volume of a cylinder it, usually, it just basically starts with finding the area of a circle. And in fact, um, you could find the area of that circle, circular top just multiplying these two together, right? Because this is pi r squared. This is already radius squared. So it'd be 16 times pi. I might as well just tell you now what the heck. Let's do it one more time, or at least one time, since we're on a roll here. So just to find the area of the circle, that the, the circular top of that cylinder, it's gonna be pi. Uh, times 16, 50.265, kind of hard to see, I know, but there it is. So that would be the area of this circle. Sometimes they want to know the area of the whole thing. We'll get to that later on. That'll be under the videos of surface area, but this is kind of a, a, a teaser for that later on, okay? All right, let's look at this, this example is one where algebra is going to be required. Very much like when we did uh, the rectangular prism, right? Uh, there's algebra, where we have to work backwards. They give us the volume of something and they want to give a, they're asking us an aspect of, like a dimension of that figure. In this case, you can already tell we're gonna be looking at height, but I wrote it down anyway. So let's go ahead and read it. It says approximately, what is the height of the cylinder? And here's our cylinder, ta-da. <laughs> and I guess, what I always say is, when it's this kind of problem, yes, we're gonna use algebra, but the thing that we should ask ourselves first is how did they get 471.23? How did they get that? What did they do? You know, we gotta get into their head a little bit. And so, 
obviously we have to start with the formula. They did the formula that we used to find the volume of a cylinder. That's what they used to get the volume of a cylinder. And that's where we have to start. So let's go ahead and start with that. So volume, uh, well, I'll put the volume is equal to volume. So let's see, the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared, pi times radius squared, times height, and that's gonna give us for the volume, that's equal to volume. In this case, they gave us the volume, so equal to 471.23. Now, again, because we're using, because we're working with things that are circular, we're using pi, and when we use pi, they're almost always gonna ask for something approximate, because pi is, again, a decimal that just goes on forever, so it's kinda hard to be exact, exact, exact. So, and okay, approximately then, all right. Now, I would go through, and I'll start putting stuff in red, I guess. Um, I would go through and start substituting the rest of the information that we have. They gave us the 471. I already put that in for volume, right? This is the formula for volume, and this is what they got when they, when they did it, when they did the formula. So what do I have? Obviously, I'm missing the red thing. I'm missing the height, right? So, so I'm not going to have the H. I have pi. I know what pi is. Pi is 3.14. Uh, the H, I don't know. I'll just keep writing all this stuff out. And you know what? It's important to be cl very clear when you're writing. Um, and what I mean is organized. It's okay to rewrite and rewrite and rewrite until you get it all simplified. That way you don't miss anything. It's just a, it's just Raul's tip of the day kind of thing, okay? All right, so what's the radius? And it's gonna be radius squared. What's the radius? Well, they gave us, what's that? This time I didn't put those two circles, right? What is that dimension that goes from one side to the other? It's the diameter. The formula doesn't require diameter, it requires radius, so it's gonna be half the diameter, in this case, five. So five squared. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we have all the information except for one thing. Ready to solve. This is an equation, because we have an equal sign, information on both sides, and we're just missing one piece of information. That's a classic equation, ready to solve. So let's get started. So the first thing I would do is the exponent because order of operations, plain and simple, we'd have to simplify that first. So here I go again. Um, yeah, I'll just go keep going in the same color. 3.14 and then five squared is 25. It's this base, five, multiplied by itself two times. So five times five. And I don't have H yet. I don't know what that is yet. 471.23. And I guess, you know what, I'm going to be criticized if I don't put it down now because it's bugging me. This is feet cubed or cubic feet, okay? I'm sorry, I forgot. But I did put the V at least, right? I put the V volume, okay. Feet cubed. All right, so we're, we're plugging along here. We did the exponent. Now these things, now <laughs> all I can do on this side is multiply times pi. And I want to get this all into one number, simplify it into one number and then separate it from the H. Okay, so let's get, let's work on that. So again, trusty calculator, instead of using the 3.14, just to be a little bit more accurate, I'm gonna go ahead and use our button pi, right? I almost said our buddy pi. Our buddy pi is right, I'm trying to get the glare out of the darn thing, but it doesn't, there's too much glare. Anyway, pi times uh, 25. And I get 78, point five three nine. I think I'll just stop at the at the thousandths at the nine. Can you guys see that? Five three nine. I'm gonna stop at the nine. Alright. So I get seventy-eight. And I'm stopping there because I'm just gonna, you know, it's approximate. I don't need to put the whole thing. You know, seventy-eight point five three nine H. Because I don't have H yet. I don't know what H is. I don't know what the height is. So okay equals and again, look at how many times I'm rewriting this. I'm just trying to not make sure I don't forget anything. And that's why I rewrite everything so many times. So now the last step, and I'm not saying this is pretty, okay, but anyway. The last step is to separate the 78.539 from the H. Now this number, 78.539, is, is multiplied to the H. So to separate them, I have to do the opposite operation. In other words, I'm gonna try and get this 78 away from the H and move it over here to the other number, this 471. Okay, so to do that, I divide. So we're gonna divide 
And whatever number divided by itself cancels out, and it's basically 1. And 1H, one how much room do I have down here? I have plenty of room. 1H is just H. I don't have to say it's 1H if I just write down 1H, right? Okay. So what I do over here, divide by 78. I'm going to divide by 78 over here, or 78.539 to be more exact. And that's the division I'm going to let the calculator do, okay? So here we go. Uh, I like using my pencil here. So, okay, 471.23. All right, so you can see I put 471.23 divided by 78.539. You guys see that? It's kind of hard with all the glare. Okay, equals 0.59.5.9994. So that's basically six. We're going to approximate that to six, okay? Hopefully, when you guys did it, you got the same answer, all right? So six. So the height is six feet. Okay, and that's how these kinds of problems get solved. Algebra is important. Now, look, I'm not saying this is, this is actually pretty messy. You know what I mean? As far as all the numbers and the decimals. But the calculator cleans it up pretty good. So um, you just got to be patient with it. Uh, try to save yourself some steps. Like right here, at least the exponent you can do mentally. Um, and yeah, so that's how this problem would be done. Let's take a look at it. Here's another time. problem that's similar to the last one that we did. However, it's a little bit different, not exact. And you can already tell more or less what it looks like. Um, again, I would recommend, I would ask you guys to see if you can solve it. Um, yeah, give it a go. See what you guys can do. Uh, see if you get the answer right or see if you get the answer wrong. And then we'll learn from the mistake, right, after I do it. So go ahead and stop the video, try it out. Okay. This problem says, approximately, what is the radius of this cylinder? And obviously, the radius is in red, and the radius is in red on the cylinder. And we know what we're looking for. This time I did, I did put the, the unit cube, so now there's no, no doubt there. So this one has a, this cylinder has a volume of 88 centimeters cubed. And then it's asking, again, because when we work with, uh, with pi, or circle, or circular things, that pi thing goes on forever, so it's always, almost always going to be an approximate answer. Approximately, what is the radius of the cylinder? Now, again, how do we start these problems? You know, I say we have to get into the head of the person who made the problem, which I made the problem, so get out of my head, but no. Uh, <laughs> but we have to figure out how did the people who got 88 centimeters cubed, how did they get that? And again, we go back to the formula, right? So the formula is pi r squared. Remember, we're talking about the formula for the volume. I mean, how did they get volume, right? So that's the area of a circle, but now we need the height times height, and that gives us the three-dimensional shape. And in this case, it gives us volume of 88. Okay, I'm not going to put centimeters, it just gives us 88, all right? So that's, that's the formula. That's, there's your basic uh, equation. I don't like my equal sign. That's our basic uh, equation. So now we just go in and start substituting more information into, into, the, into the equation. I already put the volume here, 88. But, uh, so they did pi r squared times height, and it gave them 88. That's how we have to start. Start with the formulas, okay? Now, uh, what other information did they give us? Or what other information do we know? Well, they gave us this dimension. They gave us the height. So we can go ahead and put, and we know what pi is, right? We know pi is 3.14. So let's go ahead and substitute those right away. So we know what pi is going to be, 3.14. Of course, we use the calculator and we get a more accurate answer. So this is still r squared. We don't know what, what that is. And I'll put another pair of parentheses. And oops, I almost put h again. So let's put 7, because 7 is the height, right? And that's equal to 88. All right, so here we go. We're, we're rolling now. We're rolling. So, OK. You guys might be thinking, well, how can I multiply pi times r? I don't know what r is. It's okay. We don't have to know what r squared is yet. But what we can do, because everything is multiplied, I can multiply these two together. Like, remember when I talked about uh, 
the rectangular prisms, and we were talking about how you can multiply this times that times that, or that times this times this. It doesn't matter the order as long as everything's being multiplied. It's the same thing here. The pi is multiplied to r squared, and that's multiplied to 7. 7 is multiplied to r squared, which is multiplied to pi. So it doesn't really matter. But I can get these two together. I can multiply them together. And that's what I'll do on, the, on our trusty calculator. So let's see here. Pi, and again, glare all over the place. But pi is this button right there, times. 7, which is about what's going to be probably around 21 or so. Yep, 21.99. And I'll use 21.99. I'm trying to be somewhat accurate, but I could, if I want to be more precise, I would go 9911465. I'd use the whole thing. But for us, it said approximately, so I'm just going to say 21.99. In fact, I could probably say 22, but I'm still going to use a decimal. All right. So I'm just going to say 21.99 times r squared is equal to 88. Okay, so now my penultimate or next to last step is to separate the 21, 99, from the r squared. These two numbers, I don't know what r squared is yet, but these two numbers are multiplied together. To separate them, I do the opposite operation, division. So I'm gonna divide. Oops, not 2.1, 21.99. And 21 divided by 21 is going to cancel out. It's equal to 1. 1 r squared is just 1 r squared. It's an r squared right there. Okay, so I'll bring down my equal sign down here. But this operation I did over here, this division, I have to do to the other side. So I will do that over here. 21.99. And I need to use a calculator because I do not know what that is. So 88, and uh, you guys can do it on your own, uh, divided by 21.99. And I get 4.00. <laughs> and just for fun, I'm going to go 1, because it is 4.00181, blah, blah, blah. It goes on for more. But I like to try to be a little bit more accurate when I can be, you know. I could probably just use four and I'd be good. Okay, don't worry about it. If you use four, you're probably okay. So it, we're doing good. But this is our last step. Now I'm gonna use a different color for this last step. Now, this is kind of like when we were doing the rectangular prisms, right? Where I was talking about the, the actual cube and to undo uh, X cubed, you know, like a side cubed, we had to take the, the cube root of that. It's the same thing here. I have R squared, but I don't want R times R. I just want to know what 1R is, not what R times R is. And that's what this says. So I just got to take the, I got to do the opposite operation of R squared, which is square root of R squared. Okay, so basically, and I'll, I'll explain this when we talk about roots. But this little symbol, this little, it's called the radicand. And this symbol, it comes built in with the two. So that's why you never see it with the two. It comes built in. The symbol itself means that it has a two, okay? That's why it's called the square root. So that's why they don't put the two there. But just so you know, there is like an imaginary two. When we did the cube root, I put the three because that when you have to change it up a little bit, you got to say the cube root, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, over here, these things basically cancel each other out, the little radicand and the square from the r squared, leaving me with just r, okay? Just leaving me with r by itself. It's the opposite function. The way we did the opposite here, from the opposite of multiplication, we divided. The opposite of r squared is the square root of r squared. Okay, <laughs> I always forget the r squared. Anyway, so what I did over here, I had to do over here, I gotta take the square root of 4.001, and I'm gonna go ahead and use a calculator. <clears throat> so, <laughs> we have um, 4.0, well, I, actually, I, I should show you guys how to do this. So, again, with this kind of calculator, I have to put the little radicand first, this little red thing. I gotta put the, the symbol first. And to obtain that, it's really this little, it's this button that has x squared on it, but I can't, I'm not gonna use x squared. I want this, the operation that's above it, and that's the little square root house in green, or the radicand in green. So to obtain the green, I have to push the little second button to get the green functions to work on this calculator. And so then I hit that button, that x squared, but it opens up the uh, radicand with the parentheses. And inside there, I'm going to put uh, 4.001. OK, 
Okay, now it's optional. You can close off the parentheses because you have a little parentheses right here. You don't need to in this case, so I'll just go ahead and do it. And you get two, 2.000, and that's close enough for me to say that it's two, okay? All right. Oh, no, I mean, the square root of four is two. I mean, you know, that's why it's pretty darn accurate. Okay, so that's how we do it. So now the radius here, we know that the radius is two centimeters, okay? Now this kind of problem, can, they can ask you for two different things and they would be the exact same thing, except for one difference. They could ask you, what's the diameter, right? And in this case, the diameter would be two of these, right? So it'd be two and a two, so a total of four. So it just depends on the kind of question, but this would have been the exact same process if they would have been asking for diameter or radius, except that we would be solving for radius because the formula has radius. We'd have to go all the way down to radius and then multiply it t times two to give us the two radiuses or one diameter. Okay, makes sense. So yeah, these are kind of tricky. Uh, the algebra, you gotta be pretty good with your algebra. Can't be afraid of these little square root functions. And if you have a calculator, like I said, it helps a lot. But that's why I keep showing you how to do those operations, at least on that particular calculator, so that when you run into these problems you, and you have that same calculator, if you have the same calculator, you'll learn how to, to do those things. And if you don't have the same calculator, try and figure it out. It's, it's pretty intuitive. It just takes a little bit of practice. So keep looking. I think we have one more problem for you.